Hey everybody, this is Karen Jackson and my co-host, Sandy Banso. <laughs> we are so happy to be here. This is season two, episode eight of Chat with Sandy and Karen. And today we thought we would chat about just what it's like to move to another country and experience the culture that is uh, different from our own. And um, so I'm, I, I, get to, I get to be kind of the guest. <laughs> and Sandy's well, gonna ask me the questions. Oh so, yeah, so, season two, let's mix it up. So what is it like to move to another country, Karen? Um, well, uh, it, it's, uh, the, the people have been so welcoming and so happy to see me, you know, uh, both at, at work and my neighbors. And, uh, it's been, it's been a wonderful experience just overall. Um, and it, but it has been challenging and, um, I just, but I don't regret it, and I haven't regretted since since I moved here in July. So uh, that's several months, and um, it's uh, it's just every day is different, you know. And you have to wake up in the morning and think, "What's today going to be like?" <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of what it is. And I try to just I'm taking one day at a time. Yeah, I suppose the advantage around about here is. Um... Everyone can speak English, so I think that's a, a good experience yes. that you can get by because everyone can speak English here. Yeah. Right, right, and and uh, maybe not perfect English, but uh, between the two of us, I think uh, I can uh, stumble my way through enough uh, nouns <laughs> in Swedish and. Uh, um, we can get, I can get around. Um, and also if I, if I may be, I think what has helped me and, um, is if I keep my mouth closed, I kind of look like I fit in, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I can nod and say Varsha good and, uh, um, Taksimike and the, uh, thank you. And, and, uh, uh, Urshekta, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, if I'm, if I need to get on, on the tram or off a tram or something like that. And um, I don't, I don't stand out. I, I don't think, except that maybe I'm very short. So uh, yeah. but other than yeah. that, I think <laughs> uh, and everyone seems to be a giant around me. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's just one thing I've noticed is that um, I, I can kind of, I try to fit in. And that's what I'm, my goal is. <laughs> so talking about the height, what other cultures have you experienced whilst being here? Because you've been here for about six months now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have four months. Yeah. July 10th, 11th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, four-ish. Um, yeah. So... You mean just just physically looking around at the different kinds of people? Um, no, so and, the culture, Swedish culture. Um, yeah. They have, I mean, now they've had, I mean, they've had their version of Halloween. They've had hmm. their version of Father's Day and uh, yeah. the culture of uh, how people meet and greet. Yeah. Um, well, uh it, Halloween was interesting. Uh, it seems like each neighborhood kind of has its way of, of doing things. And a couple of weeks before Halloween, we got a note in our mailbox from the neighborhood. And they said, if you're interested in giving out candy to the children, then just uh, leave a light on outside your porch and uh, or at least close to your door so that uh, the children know to come and get their treats um it's a very it's that sort of similar to the u.s in that if there's lights on in the house then the people know that they can come by but um that was kind of cool and i our school had a wonderful um 
opportunity where they allow the students to come and um, watch a scary movie and and bring their own candy and and just that way that everyone has a place to go. So I thought that was pretty cool. That was nice. Uh, Father's Day was a little different because normally I'm used to it being celebrated in June. Um, so that's kind of a fall celebration here of fatherhood. And that was a little different. I, that surprised me. I didn't know it was coming up. And then um, I, I'll i be honest with you, I'm, I'm kind of going to miss Thanksgiving this week uh, because that's actually my favorite holiday. I, I like it even more than Christmas. So um, it's going to be a little different not having the traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Um but uh, it's, it's, you know, it's different. It's, and there some people do celebrate Thanksgiving in their own way. So um, it, it'll be a little bit different. Oh, nice. So talking about Thanksgiving, what American cultures have you discovered here or have you personally tried to implement? Um, uh, I think one of the things that that uh, I, I took away from my last employment was a birthday celebration. And so uh, just acknowledging people on their birthdays, it's uh, um, not necessarily a, a big deal in uh, some of the relationships at, at work. It's not, it's not really a thing that work celebrates. If I have one thing I've noticed, so um, that's that's been kind of something interesting to uh, to try to try to encourage people and and uh, just say thank you for being you and another year, another year older. Yeah, yeah. Was has there been anything else? Um, because I think uh, Halloween is very much American and you've said it earlier. So that, um, and what else is, uh, I, it's just, it seems like, um, I don't know, days have become so shorter here. But you just oh can't. yeah. Yeah. Well, and um, at seven, seven fifteen, seven thirty, 30, it's still dark, like dark, like night dark. And around five o'clock, it seems like it's already getting dark. So the days are much shorter than um, I'm used to at this this time of year. It does that we do have short shorter days in uh, closer to the end of December um, and January, but uh, in the at least in Texas. But uh, and one thing that's on my bucket list that always has been on my bucket list is seeing the northern lights. So. Um, it's kind of good that it's so dark <laughs> because I'm always looking up, craning my, my eyes at the sky to see if I can see something. Um, but uh, where, where I'm living, it is, it's kind of cloudy. It seems to cloud up at night and clear off during the day. So that's a little, been a little frustrating, but I think the sun is going into an 11 year span of activity. So I should, I should be able to see it during my time here. So I'm just, I'm still looking for it. I still want to see, I'm still trying to uh, see it. Yeah, but they were Northern Lights. I think it was uh, Thursday. It was very bright in the sky. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and yeah, the, the last, uh, I think like three weeks, there's been three really um, active uh, streams, I guess, of, of the, the ions or whatever it is that the sun shoots at us. Um, yeah. But I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. So I'm, I'm still keeping my eyes on the sky, though. I'm going to see it. I'm determined. So you walk with your head held high. Yes. Yes. Tripping over all kinds of stuff in the street. Oh, no. I think the streets are pretty clean here. Oh, Do yeah. You know but that? I mean, just, yeah, curbs. I'm talking about curbs and bicycles oh, okay. and trams and buses and yeah you gotta gotta keep your eye out for those things too <laughs> oh i don't know what streets you're walking on karen <laughs> uh, okay so what advice would you give yourself now if you had if you had mm. to take time back one year so this time 
now last year knowing that you were going to move to yeah um well number one just be open to opportunities and um be open for um just don't be afraid to say yes that's what's um, important and um Keep your eyes, keep your eyes open for opportunities and don't be afraid. That's, that's one of the main things that I would say to myself. Um, and you'll never be completely ready. You'll never be com just like a hundred percent. You'll never have every question answered before you actually say yes and, and try to step out into the unknown. So don't, don't be afraid. Just, just do it and connect, connect with people by being yourself and um, appreciate others. And, and uh, I think that, uh, that you'll be appreciated for who you are as well. So um, don't be afraid also to, to make mistakes that you're going to make mistakes. And, um, but that's part of the adventure and part of your story that you'll have to tell for years to come is that, um, just, just go ahead and do it, and uh, you'll you'll make it. You'll make it. Yeah. Um, so those are the, uh, some of the thoughts. Yeah. Um, do you think you could, or would you move to another country now, following that you've moved to Sweden? Oh wow. I. I think so. I think maybe. Um, yeah, why not? You know, uh, <laughs> um, but I wouldn't want to do it right away because I still don't feel like I've, I've, I've done what I need to do here, you know, but, uh, but I would be open to it. And I think I would be better at it. You know? Yeah. That's, that's the yeah question. Yeah. Would you, could you? Yeah. I not telling so. you to miss tomorrow, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're trying to get rid of me already. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, I think that, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I'll tell you what, I have really gained a respect for students that I had in the past that didn't speak English, you know, um, because now I know that sometimes I think as I'm riding along a train or something and I hear something in Swedish and I think, I wonder if one day I'm just going to understand this or if it's going to be just a word or two that are going to drop into my consciousness and I'm going to know what they're talking about, you know? Um, because right now there are so many words I don't know that, and that I, I just wait for a word that I do understand so I can kind of get the, the gist of what I'm listening to. Um, but it's, it's been really good. It's been really interesting to, to hear a different language. And it's something I think about all the time, every day. And it, it, um, takes all my energy to try to understand what I'm listening to. And I, I mm -hmm. seriously do try to listen to it just so I, I, I can learn the language. Hmm. Any experiences of your journey you would like to share with our listeners? Uh, let's see. I um, got. I've gotten lost a couple times and uh, spent uh, thirty to forty minutes extra on a train once uh, coming back from Stockholm, and then I got on the the commuter train instead of the. Well, I got on the the slow train instead of the commuter train when it took me about four hours instead of three hours. So that was, that was quite an adventure. Um, but no, I've, I've, uh, I've enjoyed going shopping to, to different places to discover different stores and uh, in a mall or, or um, just different little shops that, that are, on the sides of the streets, which are kind of fun to just drop in and look look at different things in there. So that's been kind of fun is, is the shopping experience. It's been 
it's been different because there are like, like in the mall, there would be a pharmacy kind of shop. And then right across the way, there's the same kind of pharmacy kind of shop where they sell similar things, but they're competing each with each other. But yet there's the malls are all full, you know, whereas in uh, Texas are some of our malls are struggling. They can't get people to to move in and start up their shops. So uh, it's mm -hmm. it's interesting to see how the there are multiple stores and kind of repeat stores, but everyone still. You know, I, I, I don't know why one would be better than the other. They seem to sell the same kinds of things. But mm -hmm. apparently everyone's making enough money to stay in business. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, yeah. So what experience, positive experiences could you give our listeners from to move to another country? Has, um, has this was part of your journey from July or probably right. before coming here? Well, I'm still uh, there. There are certain things that have to be done, like getting a person number that I'm actually still waiting mm -hmm. to get. Um, so kind of do your do the research, find out what you need to do and in what order, because uh, a couple of times I went to the right place, but at the wrong time. And I had to come back to bring other paperwork and things. So try to uh, talk to as many people as you can and look at the websites that are available about moving to that country and see what you, what your paperwork, what you need to have. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I know that some people who are maybe students and they want to stay in the country where they're a student they have a hard time transitioning from student to worker. So make sure you know and you can get all your ducks in a row, as we say, so that um, you aren't surprised with some requirement that you can't provide for the government or whatever paperwork that needs to be done. So um, because I have a job that uh, that's that's how this whole process started. Then I'm in pretty good shape, but still, uh, it takes time. And try to be patient. Mm -hmm. Try to be patient. Well, they were really good, uh, Karen. It's so nice to hear about your positive uh, journey coming here and experiencing all of this. I think it'd be so it, it's it's so inspiring for those who want to move and especially now when uh, things are sort of like unstable, whether they can get a job or not job. So it's really nice uh, listening to all of this and, um, and knowing you've got that support, uh, like you said, with your neighbours and then at work, it's, it's nice to see and mm -hmm. hear that. Um, if anyone wants to share their experiences, then do write to us at... Uh, uh, chat WSK1 you can tweet or find us on Facebook or email us and our emails usually at the bottom um, but it'll be on our site on yeah. our YouTube site and um, other than that thank you Karen for sharing your experience with us uh, with us thank you to all our listeners and um, let We'll have a new uh, podcast for next week. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>